Hello, and welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha, and today I have with me two guests. That's the first time that I have two guests at a time. It's Dr. Nikki Yang and Dr. Lauren Matheson. We recorded a podcast in the past with Dr. Lauren Matheson about cancer. You can check this podcast on Spotify or YouTube about five ways hyperbaric oxygen therapy can help in cancer diagnosis. Today, we're going to talk about autoimmune disease. Those who know me, and most of you are like family and you know me, I have a personal investment in this particular topic. I have an autoimmune disease. I've been using hyperbaric therapy with a lot of success to help me manage symptoms. So I'd like to ask doctors who see a lot of autoimmune cases day in, day out, what is their experience? We'll talk about the health of the immune system and maybe we'll have time for some other questions. Welcome to the show, Dr. Yang and Dr. Matthewson. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with the both of you. So let's get started. Let's dive in. What is going on with autoimmune disease? We have cases, the number of cases gone up exponentially in the last couple of years. Uh, where do you think this is coming from? Multifactorial. <laughs> you know, there's many avenues that leads to uh, any type of chronic illness. There's the stress and the chemical toxicities in our water, our food, our environment. Just a lack of being able to take time off of work and rest. All of the things that we talk about to our patients that make what a healthy life is, it's getting harder and harder to to do those things. I totally agree. I've, I've seen a big flare of autoimmune, either new diagnoses or um, old conditions flaring, especially post-viral. So post-COVID, whether it was from people getting the illness or the associated things around it, um, I personally, my eczema went crazy after I had COVID the second time. Finally resolved, but would kick up anytime I had anything kind of viral happen again. So yeah, I think our immune systems have just been under so much over the last few years. In your practice, when you see a patient who came with a diagnosis of an autoimmune disease, where would your treatment be directed? It's always, we're always going to deep dive, right? And so um, certainly we're going to go root cause, we're going to go nutrition, we're going to go exposures, we're going to go um, um, deep investigation, but I will also treat symptoms right there in front of me, um, right? So someone shows up, they're really flared, and I'm going to be thinking about not only what his foundationally led to this, but what can we do right now to help manage? And that's a great spot where I love hyperbarics for flares of all of my autoimmune things, right? It's like, that's a tool that I can use in the moment. We're going to have some anti-inflammatory benefit. And then while we're doing the investigation saying, you know, what kind of food sensitivity do we need to work up? What kind of lab results are we looking for? You know, what kind of downwind exposures or, um, you know, what's in our well water or, or our mold exposures or all that kind of stuff. So I've had several discussions with hyperbaric practitioners like yourself. And we talked about the fact, uh, do we start with hyperbarics or do we introduce hyperbarics when we address all the foundations of health? And it's a huge question now in discussion in the hyperbaric community, because some say that what happens if we start with hyperbarics, we're almost masking uh, the symptoms because you get a uh, symptom relief right away. So where do you guys stand on this? Well, it, it I guess it's uh, depends on the patient because you're right. If you you know relieve their symptoms right away, if that's all they were wanting, then they attribute that session those sessions in the hyperbaric as their cure, and so they kind of become reliant on that, and they don't want to do the work of cleaning up their diet, you know, uh, healing their gut integrity, uh, you know, removing the toxins from their homes, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But there are people that are more motivated to, they want to do that root cause uh, stuff. 
and but they're just so sick and tired and you know they don't have that energy and motivation to do it so getting them to feel better gives them the the energy like you were saying the motivation to look at those types of things so you got it uh have that conversation with the patient and say, you know, we can help you with feeling better, but the symptoms will com- continue if you, you know, don't address what's really causing them. Good point. Dr. Matheson, what's your, what's your take on that? I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, it, in some circumstances, a patient will show up and right off the bat, I'm like getting all this, oh, they should belong in the chamber right now. You know, like I'll do my little bit of work up and make sure they're a safe candidate. But, um, and then other times, you know, it'll be, um, so that, yeah, really interesting. Some folks I think are amazing candidates right off the bat. I think that everyone is a candidate for HBOT. It's a matter of when though, right? So um, my long-term chronic autoimmune folks, if they're well-controlled and they're trotting along and everything's great, then they don't, I don't have a cause for them to be in the chamber right then. But if they start flaring or they say, well, I'm getting some early signs or, you know, then, then we're going to say, right, let's get you in the chamber. Now we're also going to start all of our other stuff alongside it. Um, I might've derailed that question a little bit, but this is such an interesting topic. I think what is really kind of um, lovely about the way that we've been trained to practice naturopathically is that we're never reliant on one tool, uh, right? So we have hyperbaric and we love it, but it's not, I'm not a hyperbaric doctor. I'm a I'm an integrative care physician first. And so I'm using these tools when I think they're appropriate, but they're not always appropriate. And I agree, we can, if we rely too heavily on one tool, we can mask our symptoms. We can get sort of this false uh, progress. And then, but as soon as we stop that treatment, all of our symptoms come back. And so I haven't really done my job if we're not moving to a greater state of health ultimately you get an autoimmune patient uh, how many treatments how many hyperbaric sessions are they looking at i i understand that it depends yeah. on yeah. on on many factors but yeah no you know that was i was trying to think of good examples before we got on today mm-hmm. so I have a gal who has been working with me for years. She's in her late fifties and we started working together a while ago with her uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and she's in full remission doing great there. She gets diverticulitis flares now, which is autoimmune-ish, right? We don't really know exactly why people get diverticulitis or, um, and she and I, I thought this was going to be a great example because she and I have been working together for so long that we've done all the, she knows when a diverticulitis flare is about to start, she immediately goes on to GI rest or we put her on the elemental diet. She goes heavy on her antioxidants. She, um, we've got her using some um, butyric acid enemas, right? Which is supposed to just really nourish the cells of the kind of the colon and, and, but with all this weird viral stuff going on the last few years, um, she's been having more flares that are longer lasting each time. And it is, we, we're, we've been struggling with it and we put a lot of attention to it. So I finally was like, gosh, darn it. Let's get you in the hyperbaric chamber. Like what, (laughs) what are we doing? Right. So this last go around, um, she messaged me, she goes, I'm starting to feel the ache and the pressure and I don't want to go on antibiotics. And we said, okay, immediately, you know, kick in everything we talked about and let's get you in the chamber and let's get you in the chamber every day this week. And let's get you in there, you know, at least three days next week and then see how we do. And in less than eight sessions, we were able to really head that off. Her diverticula didn't go into a full flare, right? She was able to keep it well-managed under control. She was doing all the other stuff alongside, but this I thought was a really great example because the one new tool we used was the hyperbaric and it was very effective for her. And she was pleased. She just kept getting back on the schedule. It was like that final, exactly kind of, you said earlier, like an accelerant. It was that what we needed to pull everything together and then get our great results. So I was totally delighted with her. Uh, What do you think 
is the mechanism behind hyperbaric therapy and uh, what it does for autoimmune disease folks. My understanding is anytime we're above about one atmosphere, we're entering into that anti-inflammatory state, right? So um, that's why I feel like, you know, we have soft wall chambers in our clinic. I, we're getting great results with it. And, and I might need a little more treatments or more frequency than some of the hard wall ones. But my, in my mind, if I can get folks above that threshold and hold them there, and we can do that repeatedly, I know I'm getting that anti-inflammatory benefit. I know I'm getting that benefit to our endothelial function. And then not only like Dr. Young saying, are we supercharging our oxygen? So we're finally perfusing all these areas that maybe don't necessarily always get the best perfusion. But at the cellular level, we're cranking up that mitochondrial function. So we're giving everyone just a little boost. It's amazing. You've, there's very few therapies that have a total systemic benefit that can, that, you know, we say, oh yeah, we're actively benefiting every single cell right now. So it's, that's incredible. Um, and then also we've got, like we said, all the downstream anti-inflammatory stuff, the shift away from those inflammatory cytokine states and toward that more of a tolerant state. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I think what we do, we're creating that environment sort of that is anti-inflammatory where all other therapies will work better. What other interventions have you found to be helpful in um, management of autoimmune conditions? Well, everyone gets the nutrition talk. <laughs> we start and we end with nutrition. Everyone gets, you know, and there are, I think, some broad things we can say, like um, eat less irritants and eat more nutritional foods that apply to pretty much everybody. But then we do have our individuals where, uh, you know, they can tolerate dairy more so than their peers can. Or um, um, with my autoimmune folks, I'm, I'm pretty adamant that gluten is an inflammatory molecule to everybody all the time. And if we're in a flare or we're heading toward one, or we're trying to recover from one, we need to be really strictly gluten-free and, and regardless of whether we're celiac or not. So, um, that opinion has made me unpopular in some moments, but my patients feel better. Right. And then they come back to me and they go, Oh, you were right. I had a gluten exposure and my stomach blew up and I felt terrible for days. And it's like, yeah. yeah. Or what kind of therapies do you recommend that have been shown to improve fatigue of autoimmune disease? The hyperbaric and among other, you know, IV therapy, sauna, um, it, talking to them, obviously, like we said about diet, increasing hydration, getting more water in, into them, getting them to absorb more water, healing that gut lining so that they can absorb their food. Um, it is, you know, every little thing kind of layers on it on each other. And then you get things like uh, ginseng and other adaptogens to nourish the adrenal glands and, and help in that aspect. Autoimmune disease is a chronic disease, which means there's no cure, according to conventional medicine. Uh, what do we guys think about that? I do feel like it's very possible to get autoimmune disease so well controlled and so well uh, quiet in the background that patients are able to experience life as though they did not have one. I think, it, yeah, that's that's the goal. And we, it's about education, about educating the patient on like what do you consider a cure? Thank you for uh, joining me today on this podcast and sharing this information knowledge. Uh, if somebody finds this helpful, please give us likes because it will help other people to see this information. And also, if you know someone who can benefit from this information, please send them this episode. Subscribe to our channels on Spotify, YouTube, we're everywhere. We're everywhere preaching hyperbarics.